Here we go. Huh. Oh. Oh. oh! Holy sh! Dude, what is that? What the f? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that that can't be right. It is no, right. No, no, that can't be right. Jacob, um, this is revolutionary. Hey, Matt. I, in fact, I'm gonna say this is kind of. F what do okay. you mean? This is like an R.I.P. Really R.I.P. Toyota Land Cruiser Prado because we're here with the 2024 Tank 500, the GWM Tank 500. It is a Chinese off-road SUV meant to go head to head with the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. And I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Considering you can buy this top spec Ultra for 73,990 drive away, which is almost the same price as a base model old Toyota Land Cruiser Prado when it was new, I think you guys are gonna agree with me. That, uh, yeah, this is just unbelievable. Bro, this blew my tiny little mind. Uh, yeah, it blew my tiny little mind as well. So today we're gonna take you for a full tour of the 2024 GWM Tank 500. The big tank, because of course there is a 300 that exists. Yeah, and if you want to watch that, down below, then do it after this video. We're gonna take you for an exterior tour of the Tank 500. We're gonna check out its interior because it is just like one of the most luxurious places I have ever seen. Sub 200 grand, it's wild. And this is like a quarter of that. We're going to check out the practicality as well. We're going to launch it, see just how quick it is from zero to 100, because as you saw at the beginning of this video, it's, it's actually- It's a bit surprising. It's genuinely stupid. We're gonna show you how it performs off-road because frankly, it is mind-blowingly good. And then we're gonna give this thing lots of sauce. See, how does it handle driving on back roads out here in country Australia? Jacob? Let's do let's this. Do it. So as I said, we're here with the Ultra Trim, which is top of the range. There's one below it called the Lux. That's like $66,500 drive away. Very, very good price. And yes, you do lose some stuff, but if you want to learn about what you gain with the Lux, an easy to read list, head to our website, carsource.com. We have a full written review out of this. Now, Jacob, let's talk about the way it looks. Bro, this thing is bloody aggressive. It's aggressive. Most of all, it does that kind of thing we're, we're a bit used to with some Chinese brands, which is just copying, but at least I've copied the good stuff. So to me, I'm not gonna lie, this looks like the front of a Toyota Tundra, especially with this element there, a fake vent. It does look very American. It looks also. very American. But I'm also gonna say that in some ways it just looks really unique and I love it. it looks amazing you got a massive uh, chrome grill here with sounds pretty good too the tank badge which is the same as the tank key it's kind of cool you have these really bright LED lights here you've got a really cool daytime running light there and also around the headlights themselves and very bright LED turn signals there too LED fog lights which is again very bright and we're gonna go through all the off-roading stuff uh, soon because we did take this thing off-road but as you'll see a bit later on our off-road course this thing was actually able to uh, exceed a Land Cruiser 300 series in some places Whoa. where that bottomed out this did uh, really Really, really well. So yeah, it comes with a lot of off-roading kit and is actually one of the most capable off-roaders. I have driven straight from the factory off-road. It's wild, but again, we'll come back to that. Underneath you do get a steel bash plate and a recovery hook there as well, in case you do get stuck off-road. And otherwise, it's just a really big American looking SUV. I love it, man. Plus I love this color. It's yeah. very unique. A very uh, gold, which is mm. quite Land quite Cruiser Prado, Prado, Prado yeah. that we reviewed. Anyway, Jacob, let's check out the side. Let's do it. Alrighty, Jacob, let's talk about the side. It's a good looking thing. You've got these 18 inch wheels here. That's actually a very good size for off-roading. It means, in fact, it's regarded as the best because it gives you a good balance of comfort, but also being able to put on massive, massive tires. Now this does have pretty big tires, but they're highway terrains. They're called Disney. They're not, you know, bloody Michelins. Let's just say that. Uh, I'm not gonna lie guys, when we did take this thing off-road, uh, two of the cars we had uh, popped a tire. Uh, and that's just because they're not meant for off-roading, but they're really great on-road tires. I'll give them that. First thing I would change if you're gonna be taking this thing off-road are those, those tires. That's unreal. Let's just talk about what's happened here. So you've got obviously power folding mirrors. You've got these side steps here, they're metal side steps and they fold away. In fact, unlike the Land Cruiser that was also at that event, that actually dented. Whereas this, because it folds away under the body, nothing happened to them. Dude, honestly, that is one of the best features of this car. It's, it's unreal. Super cool. And it's really responsive. You lock the car, they fold away within like two seconds, open the car and it, look, look at this. So good, and you know what? It's wide enough, you can put your whole foot on it. Genuinely, it's um one of the smartest things I've seen in a very long time, and more off-roaders need to do this. Keep in mind, guys, this, this is what blows my mind. This car is 73,990 on the road. You got this in your garage kind of thing. For 73,990. It blows my mind. So you get a 360 camera here, one of the best 360 cameras, but GWM does that really well across all their models. You got these, oh, keyless entry and go here. Very tinted privacy glass, and you've got some roof rails up there as well. And otherwise, it's a big fat SUV, just over five meters long. It looks pretty Prado-y from here. Yeah, it actually sits in terms of size between the Prado and the Land Cruiser 300 series. 
theory. It's actually a pretty good size, I think. Let's check out the bum. Alrighty, Jacob, let's talk about the bum. It, it keeps looking more and more like a bloody Prado to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I actually think it looks quite different. I really like these LED tail lights here. LED turn signals, LED reverse lights, so everything's LED, which is very good. Again, would not say that on some competitors. 500 HEV, because this is a hybrid vehicle. It only comes to Australia with a two litre four cylinder turbo petrol engine mated with an electric motor sandwich between the engine and transmission. And you'll see how that all works a bit later. It is a little complicated, but we've got you. It's bloody worth it. You've got the GWM tank badge there on your full size spare wheel with a reverse camera there too. Come over here, GWM tank. Love that. Don't put your little feeties on there. And also Jacob, under here, you won't find a towing kit, but you can get one. This thing has a three ton braked towing capacity, which is definitely not class leading. That would be about three and a half ton, but still pretty damn good. And then down the bottom, you have a meaty-ish diffuser and underneath is a real exhaust. And for some strange reason, you want to hear what it sounds like. So take a listen. Yeah, that wasn't the best. Yeah, it wasn't the best, was it? Jacob, let's talk about the practicality. Let's do it. Jacob, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store. In what okay? way? Because look at this. Look. Oh, it's a barn, barn door. door. I, That's right. I genuinely do not like them. I love them. <laughs> Yeah, you really don't like them. Jacob and I are polar opposites here because yes, it is very practical. If you're backed up against something, you can't open the bloody door, but it looks cool open. It looks cool. And you know what? You do get a pretty massive aperture. Excuse me while I electronically put up these seats. It produces a calming melody. It's quite slow. Yeah. One hour later. So Jacob, with all three rows up, you get 79 liters of space. Really not very much, if no. I'm being totally honest with you. Uh, under here, you have a warning triangle um, and you can hide your cargo cover, but otherwise there's not much there. I love the fact that you get electronically folding back seats. They don't just fold down, they go up as well. It's just, it's mind blowing. It is actually luxury. <laughs> that like, again, guys, 73,990. And you can do it individually as well. That's cool. And now you get 795 liters of boot space, like genuinely a lot of space. And then of course you can drop the second row and you get 1,459 litres of boot space. So quite a lot. This thing is very practical. Uh, certainly a lot better than a Toyota Fortuna or a Mitsubishi was... Pajero Sport. Those cars were crap. Yeah, this is super duper impressive, man. Let's start. Let's talk about the interior. Let's do it. Alrighty, Jacob. Dude, holy sh**. Okay, so these Chinese manufacturers got to calm down. They're they're actually leveling up to a scary point, guys. This would be considered a uh, like a budget Audi, a budget budget Audi with bloody cloth seats at this price point. This is just unreal. Like the fit and finish that they have achieved with this, the materials, the technology. Holy! F so let's just start. Listen to this. That was the side steps. Listen to this. Oh! You know what? Cut. That's the end of oh. the video. <laughs> Wood. This is real wood trim. You have leather around. It could be leatherette, but it feels like real leather. Oh, more wood. You have metal knurling here. You've got some more metal there. You have an analog clock. What is this? A bloody Bentley Bentayga? You have a f***ing analog clock. You've got this leather or leatherette here. Couldn't care less what it is. This beautiful leather steering wheel with a really nice leather insert here too with the tank badge. Yet yeah, the build quality and the material choices are, are unreal. And don't worry, they continue to get more unreal. These seats here, they're quilted, heated and cooled with nine stages of heating or cooling. They're also wrapped in Nappa leather. Nappa leather. With a massage function. And there's like 12 ways you could have your back massage. And this is some, some like, like shitty massage, right? These are actual massage things that move around and give you a proper massage. I think there's a little person in the seat. There could be a little person in the seat. It's that good. I'm really lost for words and I did not expect it. I mean, I kind of expected it. I was, I was super impressed by the 300. I knew this would be a step up. This is just next level. There are some things that I think are a little silly. We've got these star lights effects here. It just looks a little naff mm. as part of the uh, ambient lighting, but you can also make it dance to your music. That's an option, but there are some cool implementation. So here on the door, you've got more ambient lighting. And for example, if something's coming up in your blind spot, it'll actually start to flash. So that's actually very helpful at like nighttime, things like that. Technology. What in God's name is this? Dude, it's uh, <laughs> sorry, I brought my laptop. It's one of the largest displays I've seen in a car in a, a little while. I'm not going to lie. This is like Tesla levels of huge, super responsive. It works really well. They've obviously paid a lot of attention to the, um, the software because that was an issue, you know, when it was like, Hey, don't stray. There's a few, uh, GWM and Havel things that, uh, used to annoy us. And now they seem to be gone. They're fixed it. They're listening to feedback and that is fantastic. You've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those work really well. The screen is just unbelievable. 
unbelievably good resolution. If you want to change volume and stuff, there is no physical button here. You can do it from the steering wheel, but you just drag the screen down and do it there. So it's actually pretty easy to do. And you also access some of your air conditioning controls, like your temperature control that's through the screen. But again, it's never crashed or frozen on me. It just, it works fine. And you kind of set it and forget it like a lot of new cars these days, if I'm being totally honest with you. Now we will talk about off-roading in just a second, but the thing that this does really well is that it's got this display here. You drag up, it's called four by four off-road. It just shows you a bunch of off-roading information, what your tire pressure is, your heading, your pitch, your roll. Uh, even tells you the atmospheric pressure where you are. You can also see your locking rear diffs because yes, it has a center, rear, and front locking differential, wild. You've got something called Conqueror Perspective, which just brings up a really cool 360 camera, but it will also change depending on if you are in expert mode, where you've got a little button here with a man in a tie. Press that and you can adjust all of these settings for high speed off-road racing. My favorite drive mode though, Jacob, it's not gentle or comfort. What is it? It's radical. Radical. Yeah. So these are some of those strange um, quirks that some Chinese cars still have because there's some things that are just lost in translation, but it doesn't actually impact on your driving experience. What does impact on your driving experience though, Jacob? I mean, that bloody camera. This little guy right staring here. Staring at yeah. you. He stares big, at you. Big brother's watching. Yeah. yeah, look, you've got a camera here that's always looking at your eyes and it's just poorly calibrated. It will pick up if you're looking anywhere other than directly in front of you. So it beeps a lot. Thankfully, it is really easy to turn off through this display, um, yeah. but you shouldn't have to. I'll be honest, I didn't have any problems with it. I think it's just because you're cross-eyed. <laughs> Bro, you've, 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 you've done it this time. <laughs> You get a digital screen up in front of you and again, really responsive. Uh, it shows enough information on it. I'm not gonna say it's the world's most customizable screen, but you've got like an off-road mode and also a map mode if you so choose, but I just keep it on. I believe it's called classic. You're just a classic guy, aren't you? Just like you, Jacob. So in terms of IO, you have this little hidden area with a wireless charger, a Qi wireless charger, Jacob. You've got a USB-C port, USB-A port, a 12 volt socky walky in this little area. Kind of hard to access though. I, I wish it was just somewhere more logically placed. Uh, you can access your heated and cooled seats from here. You've also got a two-stage heated steering wheel. Storage is fantastic. So a massive glove box here that's felt lined. You've got another storage area to the right of the driver. You've also got felt lined door pockets, which are again, massive. The center armrest is so nice and soft. You've got heaps of storage in there too. And a little air vent. You can route air conditioning through there. Keep drinks cool. That's awesome. A little storage tray here. Push that back. You get a couple of cup holders and that whole thing is removable as well. If you just want more space in the center. So really smart design packaging, it's awesome. Not to mention the sunroof. Dude, <laughs> I was about to say, Holy the sunroof moly. is huge. Oh, not to mention the Infinity sound system, which actually sounds incredible. It's got some of the best bass I think I've ever heard. It's funny because like, look back 10 years ago at some Chinese cars, they were, they were not good. They were, yeah, bloody buckets, tin buckets, yeah. I would say. Not good, and this is just like, it's unrecognizable, and they've leveled up so much. It's kind of scary. I kind of love it. Let's check out the back seats. Let's do it. Alrighty, Jacob, back seats. You look like you have bloody boatloads of room. I really do. So I'm five foot 11. I've got so much leg room. Toe room is also really good. Headroom is fantastic. Again, loving this panoramic sunroof, especially in the back. You have air vents here, more air vents here. You've also got a third zone of climate control and nine stage cooled seats here in the back. How interesting. They give you cooled seats, but no heated seats. I prefer that because Australia gets a lot hotter than it does get a lot That's colder. True. That is true. But it probably also should have had heated seats. But you know what? It's $73,000. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, uh, on the wish list, GWM. Pull this down. Oh, you get this nice soft center armrest with a couple of hidden cup holes. Very nice. Of course, it is the Napa leather back here too. Really soft and comfortable. I'm really enjoying the angle my legs are at because we have stadium style seating, which means that I sit up higher than the driver. So I've got a better view out there too. Got other niceties like sunshades. That's Man. awesome. Built in. Quality does not take any sort of hit back here. It's all nice and soft. You've got a map pocket folio here. You can also slide these seats forward and back and also Oh. A nice little recline. That's fantastic. There is also a, a third row, as you guys saw earlier. And let me be honest with you. It's really good. It's really f***ing good. Like, what the f***, man? So, easy to get into the back. Again, I'm 5 foot 11. I have okay amounts of leg room. My toe room is also compromised, but okay. And my headroom is also pretty good. The reason that that's okay and fine and actually pretty good is because most competitors, I can't even fit behind the second row. Yeah, so, the, the third row is usually reserved for kids. It's usually terrible. You do get air vents back there. You've also got a couple of cup holders in the back with some extra storage area. And there's also buttons to fold the third row from back there too. Yeah, that's awesome guys, because it means that you can drop one of the seats and get more storage space, because as you saw with all three rows up, you don't get much storage space. So really, really good design. They've literally benchmarked the best and they have done so. So unreal. 
Great job with the interior, Jacob. Let's talk about off-roading. Okay, let's talk about how this thing goes off-road because I was able to spend quite a lot of time behind the wheel going up Mount Disappointment in Victoria, which if you know anything about off-roading tracks, it's actually quite a difficult one. And Jacob, I have to be honest with you. Please do. This thing was incredible. For an SUV that weighs almost three tons, what it was able to do was mind-blowing and I'll show you some footage here now but it was just crazy. Let's talk about some of the off-roading stats though. So this thing has a wading depth of 800 millimeters. That's how much water it can go into before it starts to flood the engine without a snorkel. That's unbelievably good. It's got a ground clearance of 223.5 millimeters which is about class average but still very good. The wheel articulation by the way is fantastic. That's not a stat they give but it is really good. It means that you almost Almost always have a wheel on the ground, almost no matter what. This is the most wild part to me. So the underpinnings of this is a serious body on frame off-roader. Not only do we have a Borg Warner low range transfer case that does keep this car at a very low speed, even with high RPM, the electric motor really helps to boost you out of those really tight situations where you would have to build up a lot of RPM in a diesel equivalent car, like a Land Cruiser Prado. You kind of just get that instantly. As soon as you put your foot on the accelerator, you get the instant torque. I feel like hybrid is the future of off-roading. It makes sense, right? 100%. And by the way, that is with the battery sitting under the back of the car. It is well cased and well protected, so there was no issues with bottoming out and whacking that. The Tank 500 has an approach angle of 30 degrees, a departure angle of 24 degrees, and a ramp breakover angle of 22 and a half degrees. And when you combine that with the fact that you have some insane things like a center rear and front locking differential. This thing will pull itself out of pretty much any situation. You've got off-road cruise control. You have what's called tank turn, which is a bit of a gimmick, but essentially it breaks the inside back wheel and that allows you to have a tighter turning radius. So if you come to like the end of the track and you've got nowhere to turn around. And that builds on top of the software that they've put into this thing. The fact that it has 11 different drive modes is just wild. And they all maximize the drivetrain, the traction, everything like that. So off-road, I can tell you this thing is really capable. And like I said earlier, we're a Land Cruiser 300 series bottomed out a couple of times, this still had ground clearance. So that was wild to me. The fact that this essentially did better off-road than a Land Cruiser 300 series stock for stock. Pretty crazy stuff. But enough off-roading. This thing is also really f***ing fast. Let's launch it from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Let's do it. Alrighty, friend. It's time to launch the yeah. bloody Tank 500. Great wall claim boldly that this will do zero to 100 in 8.5 seconds. What we'll actually do, let's turn off traction because that's the way we can get launch control. This thing is f***ing launch control. Fist me, Are fist me good. Touch me. Oh, whoa. Here we go. Huh. Oh. Oh. oh, holy sh Dude, what is that? What the f***? <laughs> oh. 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 Bro, why do I get the sudden urge to cry? Tears of joy. Dude. That that can't be right. It is no, right. No, no, that can't be right. We have to retest okay, it. Okay, we'll retest that. It also depends on the battery state, but fine. Bro, the scientist within me says that 6.97 seconds is bloody impossible if they're claiming 8.5. Okay, well, let's do that I one more we'll time. Find then. Out. All right, man. Bro, you don't want to believe it. I don't believe it. You just, you're just a, a China hater. Okay. That is not this. true, bro. Here Ooh. we go. Fist me. Oh, it hooks up Jeez. so well. God. Oh, it's a fast lizard at 60 minutes. No, it's not. Ah! <laughs> Bro, I will, uh, I will eat my goddamn words. F you, okay? F you. No. F you. <laughs> All right, bro. I guess you know I gotta hand it to you. Ah! ah! Let's try this thing okay. as normally as we can. All righty. We're gonna see how quick this thing is. Silent. We're gonna see how quick how how far we can go with EV still on. How fast? Okay. 30 almost. Ah, it switched on, you bastard! Foot God down! God damn it. I wanted an EV tank. Jeez, eyes, uh... This thing's got some bloody pickup. So, Jacob, this thing weighs close to three tons. Just like you. You listen here. We had a discussion about this. Bro, I don't care what you think. Jesus! What is that? That was a bit weird. Okay, so... I think that nine-speed uh, transmission had a bit of a hiccup there. It had a little bit of a hiccup. Let's talk about what's powering this thing. So, it's a two-litre turbocharged petrol engine up at the front. We've also got that hybrid system where there's an electric motor sandwiched between a nine-speed automatic transmission. Developed. Sounds a little bit like a Ranger. Developed. <laughs> That's ten-speed. Yeah. Idiot. Minus one. Sandwiched between that and the engine, and so it changes with gears. Now, Jacob, you might have noticed something. I've literally been waiting to interject, <laughs> all right? 
what is that goddamn rattle? There's a bit of a rattle in the dash. You see, we've done some pretty hardcore off-roading in this thing, it's and uh, it seems to have, let's just say, uh, loosened something in the dashboard. That would be covered under warranty. There's some bloody screws loose in, in this car, not just in our heads. So yes, this thing has a hybrid system. You can see it working here right now. It's currently regening. Oh, and now the engine's putting out power. I love hybrids. <sighs> the only thing is, it doesn't do the hybrid, um, at least fuel economy part very well. So 10.5 liters is fine, but around town I've been getting about almost 15 litres per 100 kilometres, uh, 14 and a half say. Not very good in urban environments, but Great Wall did say that that's not what the hybrid system is about. It's actually all about putting the car into oh, sport mode, putting our foot down and giving it some source. <laughs> is that what they said? It's about giving it some source. Look, I'm paraphrasing. Is that a direct I'm, para I'm paraphrasing. This thing is like surprisingly fast. It's got a lot of performance to it. And when you compare it to something like it's Arch oh my Nemesis, God. the Prado. Dude, it's... this is completely different. Like <laughs> ever since you switched to sport mode, yeah. it's a whole different car. It's a whole different car. And you've got 11 drive modes. Oh. <laughs> And they're all God. tuned differently. Uh, most of our off-roading. Oh, 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 oh God, Jesus. the cameras. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, camera. So this thing is so fast. It's got regenerative braking to put energy back into the electric powertrain. And the other benefit of having this electric motor is actually when you're off-road. So when we were off-roading, I really noticed a lot of that instant torque from the electric motor helping to pull us along. The downside of this car, but also the upside in a way, are the tires. So they're mm. these random gitty something tires. At least yeah. they're not linglongs. Yeah, at least they're not linglongs. They are really good like mm. along the road, but um, as soon as you go off-road, they like to pop. We had, we had a couple that popped. <laughs> Jeez. So, highly recommend, even though this comes with a spare tire and that was used. Get I, some new bloody yeah, tires. Put, put some uh, all terrains on there. Yeah. Friend, we have to talk about the comfort. Bro, this thing is comfortable. Holy moly. So obviously it's got one setting for the damper and that is comfy <laughs> because it is comfortable. Obviously at the expense of turning a corner and you start to body roll, but as you would expect for a three ton SUV, but my God, this thing is so comfortable. I will say as well, apart from that ridiculous rattle, there's almost no vibration, no noise, nothing. Quiet in here. Mm -hmm. It's actually got active noise cancellation. And you can turn it off if you want to, but why, why, why would you? you? Why would you? Yeah. It makes it nice and quiet in here. Like I know we've harped on about this, but it feels so premium when you're you know sitting what? here. It really does just feel like a little bit more luxury version of the Tank 300 and a little bit bigger. For a price of a base model current gen Prada, unreal. Mind blowing. China, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, China? Oh, ABS. <laughs> ABS could probably be better calibrated. But here we are, friend, at Saucy Bloody Corner. We're going to put the traction off and we're going to launch control it it's again. It's a little bit damp. There's no launch. Oh, Ha ha bitch! Tickle me. Oh! <laughs> What the oh, hell? Far out. The transmission, oh. it just suddenly becomes like spicy. Really like upshifts hard. Oh God. Yeah, look, it's not a sports mm. car. <laughs> Jesus. This thing is like a bloody boat. It really is. And you feel the inertia oh. of the car. <laughs> Ah, but bro. here's the thing, traction is actually really good because it's a permanent four-wheel drive. Permanent four-wheel drive. So yes, it uses more fuel, it's less fuel efficient, but it just does work really well. And also for the most part, when you're rolling along the road, the nine-speed auto, it does work fine. I'm not gonna say it's the best transmission in the world, no. but also with the hybrid powertrain, like there's a lot going on. So yes, when you come to a stop, for example, let's put the car back into normal. You're gonna see this. I'll put my foot down now and it takes a second to start moving. I don't know, it's fine. It like, might not matter that you, much around town. You might get the occasional toot. <laughs> you get a little toot from behind. You just get used to it. The other thing I love, and they fixed this. Remember in the Tank 300 out of the steering wheel? It was not great. Let's it just was... say it was having a party by itself <laughs> yes. and no one else was invited. Yeah, correct. If you double tap this, it turns on a much better calibration of that system. Good. And it just works. Oh. Look, look at this, look at this. Oh, don't do this at home. I mean, oh, it's turning. To be fair, I would say the Tank 300 probably also been fixed. It has been yeah. fixed, but uh, it was bad at the beginning. So the thing that they're doing really well is listening to feedback and updating it. And for the launch of this, where I went to it, they actually brought out like a lot of the execs of GWM from China to Australia. And they were just sitting there with notepads as we were telling them all the things we don't love about this. That's like, pretty cool. Like that driver monitoring system, which is not well calibrated, but they were taking notes and they're actually going to rectify it. You know what? You don't see that at a lot of other car events. You don't. I was really, really impressed. Now, let's put the car one more time back into... Oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Some more sauce. Oh! <laughs> Delayed uh, reaction there. But it's pretty fast, man. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. Seriously has some grunt. Let's get in 12. 
Final thoughts. Let's do it. Alrighty, Jacob. Final thoughts on the GWM Tank 500. You first. Holy crap, this thing is bloody amazing. No, like, as I said at the beginning of this video, this car is like revolutionary. I mean, GWM have always been introducing these pretty cheap models into Australia that do undercut competition, but they felt compromised in some way. This is one of the first products I've gotten into that just, it doesn't feel compromised. Okay, some of the safety systems and stuff could definitely be updated, but they are actually going to be doing that. They have been doing that. And as it currently stands, I couldn't recommend this more. It's unreal. No, seriously, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. And of course, if you want to buy one of these or any other car, head to castles.com forward slash buy. We'll get you the best price with cars that are actually in stock without the hassle. Yeah. Hell yeah. Bye-bye. Ciao.